I've always had a love for animals, ever since I was a little kid. And today, as a biology student, I'm interested in the study of life uh, in living organisms. I know a lot of you in this room may not have science backgrounds, but still have a love for animals and plants. It's quite remarkable to see that we as human beings are just one species out of the 1.3 million on our planet. And there's still millions that have yet to be identified. But it's also quite concerning to say that the loss of biodiversity has increased over the last several years. First, we need to actually recognize that there are, in fact, two types of mass extinctions that are occurring. You may have heard um, the mass extinction phenomena on the news. In the small area, uh, small peaks in the green area of this graph represents uh, background extinction, which is just extinction that occurs naturally because not every species can survive in the next generation and will get wiped out as a result. But this isn't concerning because new species can form and generally things will balance out. But when the extinction rate exceeds that of the background extinction rate, that's when we may be concerned of a mass extinction as we see in the large peaks of this graph. And we've had five mass extinctions in the history of our planet, one of which you should be familiar with as the extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. But you may be wondering, well, there's no asteroid that's going to hit Earth. So why are we so concerned of a mass extinction? Well, uh, that's because there are several other factors that are causing a mass extinction. It's not just an asteroid that's going to hit Earth. One factor, which is the driving factor behind this, is climate change. Uh, in uh, this peak here, we see that the carbon dioxide levels in our atmosphere has skyrocketed since the Industrial Revolution. Many habitats are being driven towards extinction for industrial use. And with carbon dioxide levels increasing, temperature has also increased, as you see in the trend of this graph here. I thought I would give an example of the sea ice uh, as a good example of mass extinction, since that's a good icebreaker. In red, we see the median ice edge from 1981 to 2010. In white, we see the area for se September of 2019. So you can see that the sea ice is getting smaller. It's getting smaller because it's melting. It's melting because of climate change. In fact, we've lost 2.1 million square kilometers in that time frame. And animals like the polar bear rely heavily on the sea ice in order to travel and to hunt. If the sea ice were to melt and polar bears go extinct, that's going to have a domino effect on the entire Arctic food chain, starting from the seals that they eat all the way to the smallest of living organisms found in the Arctic Ocean. And people that live in the north rely on the life that's found in the Arctic uh, in, order to, uh, in order for their own health and survival. And so if the Arctic ecosystem were to collapse, that's going to have a severe impact on their livestock. And polar bears are certainly not the only animals that are affected by climate change and a loss of habitat. And the people in the north are certainly not the only peoples that may be affected by a loss of biodiversity. Other groups of organisms that have been affected by climate change and a loss of habitat would include birds. And birds are important because they disperse seeds and they scavenge carcasses. They're important to that life cycle on Earth. Often people forget that amphibians and reptiles are also important because they're great pest controllers. They'll eat insects and rodents, which will help prevent the spread of disease. And yet they too have been affected by climate change and a loss of habitat. Invertebrates, like insects, are great pollinators. And other invertebrates, like worms, are great for soil quality. But climate change and uh, loss of habitat are not the only factors that are affecting and causing a mass extinction. Often people don't recognize that there are, in fact, so many other anthropogenic factors that are causing a loss of biodiversity. It's not just climate change. In this specific example, many invertebrates like bees and butterflies have been affected by the use of chemicals like herbicides and pesticides. These chemicals are killing them and the habitat that's around them. One third of the food we consume comes from these pollinators, and so they're extremely important to our environment and planet.
Fish participate in the nutrient cycle. They're the heart and soul of our oceans, lakes, and streams. Fish have a very high economic value because they're food source for millions of people around the world. Often fish that live in the ocean will live in or around coral reefs. And coral reefs have an economic value of about 3.4 billion US dollars. Uh, and coral reefs are extremely sensitive to changes in temperature and pH. And so because of climate change, ocean acidification and plastics being thrown in the ocean, they're on the brink of extinction. But coral reefs uh, have not just been affected by climate change. Other factors that people don't recognize would include glass fishing, where explosives are used in the water to blow up a huge area and uh, collect a huge amount of fish at once. Not only is this causing a huge loss in biodiversity at a very fast rate, but the impact is also killing coral reefs as a result. And cyanide fishing, where cyanide is used to knock out fish and bring them into aquariums, that cyanide is also killing coral reefs and the habitat that's around it. On a more familiar example, although we as human beings may be thriving in our populations, one in four mammals are not. And apart from climate change, other factors would include poaching. We lost the northern white rhino recently to extinction, and many other species of rhinos are on the brink of extinction because of poaching. 13 rhinos were killed in 2007, but over 1,000 were killed in 2017. And so poaching is becoming a huge increase over the last few decades. And rhinos are important because rhinos are herbivores. They'll eat a huge amount of vegetation, which will help shape the landscape in Africa. Even our closest relatives, like orangutans, have been affected by poaching. We share 97% of our DNA with orangutans, and yet it seems like we still have no remorse. And orangutans are just like rhinos. They'll disperse seeds and will help maintain the landscape uh, in Africa, especially in uh, the rainforests. But even forests have been victims of mass death. We lose about 18.7 million acres of forests every single year. That's equivalent to 27 soccer fields every minute. Deforestation is actually the second largest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. Forests are made of plants, and often people forget that plants are extremely important to our environment because it helps fight climate change. It converts carbon dioxide into oxygen, but it could also be habitat for millions of species and food for millions of species. It could even be converted into medicine for our own health and survival. And yet we are destroying forests for palm oil plantations. Many forests are being left to burn with no treatment or attention given. And even all of us here have probably con contributed to deforestation in some way. Because a lot of the clothes that we wear that comes from these large, trendy companies that continuously need to keep up with the current trends in fashion uses these fibers that comes from these trees and forests. And so deforestation is continuously promoted because of this high demand. And so you see that all these living organisms play a role in their respective ecosystems. And all these ecosystems help maintain the planet that we have. In a sense, we rely on a lot of these living organisms for our own economy, health, and survival. And yet we are the most responsible for the loss uh, of biodiversity. And although climate change is the driving factor behind this, there are several other anthropogenic factors like poaching, deforestation, chemical use, and other factors not mentioned here that should also be given the same amount of attention and awareness. It's not just climate change. So what can we do to help? Well, technically, each and every one of us in this room can make a difference. We can continue to recycle and watch what we throw out. When buying clothes, we can consider quality over quantity. And we can conserve our waters, conserve our electricity, and if the distance is short enough, consider walking or taking the bike instead of taking the car. And when it comes time to vote, vote. And vote for a government that believes in climate change, or at least has a plan in place that you believe in, and spread awareness of this. 
And I know a lot of you have heard of this over and over again over these years, but these are truly small and simple adjustments that all of us can make. At least locally, there's wildlife all around us, and we can make a difference with that. And hopefully this can spread to a larger population. But the question then becomes, how far can this go? Because at the end of the day, this is a global issue that requires a global solution. Can humanity unite to prevent a sixth mass extinction, let alone fight climate change, because it's just one factor? And you look at all these climate change protests around the world, ask yourself, what has it truly accomplished? Can humanity unite when humanity can't even seem to unite on the opinion of climate change? There are still millions of people around the world that don't believe in climate change, even with the evidence. And although they're entitled to their own opinions, you can see that on a global scale, the divide is clear. And on a global scale, there are still millions of people who contribute to poaching. Laws and regulations behind deforestation, chemical use, and other factors seem to be limited. And the intention given to it also seems to be limited. And on a global scale, we certainly cannot separate the science from the politics. And so this becomes an extremely difficult and complex issue. And so I leave you with this thought. If all of these animals, plants, mountains, oceans, and lakes can unite in harmony to help conserve the planet around the world, to create these beautiful ecosystems around the world, why can't we, as humanity, unite to help maintain the planet that we have. Because at the end of the day, this planet doesn't just belong to us. We, along with millions of other species, work together to belong on this planet. Thank you.